I want to hear about the gut biome. So there was a there was a paper published in um, so. uh, the journal Cell. The paper was done by a research team out of Herzliya. So I'll I'll take a step back. The human body is made up of roughly ten trillion cells, um, and there are also somewhere between ten and forty trillion bacterial cells that live in your body, primarily in your small intestine, in your in what people call the gut biome. And so this is a population of microbes, bacteria, that are basically chemical factories. They eat stuff up and they spit out chemicals and those chemicals end up in our body. And it turns out that the gut biome, the bacteria in our gut, can actually regulate our health in a very significant way. And this was the basis of our company, Unique. You guys can bleep that out if you want, which is now called Supergut. And Jake, I know you've tried the product. Which was Supergut is awesome. Thank you. You sent me, a, I bought Unique. That helped me with my weight loss. And then I just got super gut bars, yeah, and so which the, are delicious. The, the principle of that business is that there is a known product, uh, a, a molecule, amylose, that you can feed the gut biome. It doesn't get absorbed by the human body. It sits in the gut biome. And the bacteria in your gut, certain types of bacteria will eat it. Their population will grow. And other population of bad bacteria will shrink. And the good bacteria release chemicals called short-chain fatty acids that go into your blood and reduce your blood sugar and have a profound effect on uh, on your metabolism. And there are also known gut bacteria that can regulate your sleep, your mood, your anxiety, your energy levels, and um, uh, your glycemic control, the control of blood sugar. So it's, it's an incredible- Are you telling me, are you telling me that Cialis is a, a natural compound? Is it bacteria? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Wait, are, I mean, you so are you saying we have to cancel our Cialis <laughs> prescriptions? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. So guys, there's, 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 a known, um, there's a known principle that's really deeply studied now in neurology, uh, in, in neuroscience, um, uh, called the gut-brain axis, that you can actually profoundly affect um, disease and the condition of the brain um, and, uh, and neuro conditions by changing the gut biome. And so this is, a, this is something that's just being studied. The reason it's, it's all coming to light in the last few years is because of the cost of DNA sequencing. We, it used to be very, very expensive to sequence the DNA from your gut biome, which you do by looking at your poop, and then you know looking at all the DNA that's in the poop, and that tells you what your gut biome, what bacteria in your gut. That used to cost a thousand bucks, now it costs five bucks. And so in the last couple of years, there is this absolute explosion in research into the gut microbiome, and more importantly, how the gut microbiome affects human health. So this particular paper looked at the effect that eating um, artificial sweeteners had on the gut biome and on human health. And so what these researchers did is they, um, they took 120 people, they gave them nothing or gave them sugar or gave them saccharin or sucralose or aspartame or stevia, the four most popular artificial sweeteners. And then they looked at how their gut biome changed. And importantly, they looked at how their glycemic control or ability to control blood glu glucose changed. Blood glucose, as you guys may recall, you know, you always have glucose in your blood. The more, if you have over, you know, a level of 100, uh, you know, you can, and, and it persists, you can actually have really bad health effects, and it causes high A1C over time, which is diabetes. Um, and so high- And it stores uh, more fat when you're spiking, and so you get yeah, fatter. Yeah, when, when you have high blood glucose, it's actually damaging to organs, it's damaging to cells, and over time, it can cause very significant deleterious effects to the human body. That's what the, the disease of diabetes is and does, is it's about high blood, glu blood, high blood sugar, blood glucose. So what these guys did is they gave people uh, saccharin, sucralose, aspartame, and stevia, and then measured their blood glucose and their ability to convert um, uh, sugar in the blood and absorb it and use it. And that's called glycemic control. The way you guys, you guys have probably done this in the doctor, you take a glycemic control test, you drink a bunch of sugar water, and they measure your blood sugar every couple of minutes, and then they show the curve on how effectively your body can metabolize that glucose. And if it cannot metabolize that glucose well, you have bad glycemic control, and ultimately that is diabetes. And what they found was that if you eat saccharin and sucralose, which we always assumed were better than sugar, they actually adversely affect your ability to control um, uh, blood glucose. Saccharin and sucralose in particular drive up your blood glucose and makes it harder for your body to metabolize glucose out of your blood. Aspartame and stevia were relatively benign, Oh, really? Because that's what's in Coke Zero. That's what I drink. There you go. Aspartame. And so, so, so that was kind of the realization. And then they went deep and they actually analyzed the microbiome and they showed that there were profound differences 
and how these um, compounds affected the microbiome. It turns out that sucralose, for example, is more likely not being absorbed by your intestines. So it's sitting in the intestinal walls and the bad bacteria are eating it. And the, the, the good bacteria that are supposed to be making short chain fatty acids and all these chemicals that regulate blood sugar um, have a lower population. And so we actually see a, a profoundly negative effect from eating certain compounds. Have and you so, shipped your poop to test these? Like you have to... Yeah, we, just, we, just, we just did a clinical trial at Supergut, by the way, and we found uh, and, and we published it. So it's, it's, it's public. But wait, ha, ha, just the audience doesn't not even know this stuff exists in, in all likelihood. The, you basically take a poop and you put it in a vial and you send it and they analyze your poop. I don't mean to be graphic yeah. here, but have you done this no, before? So, How does this work? Yeah, I, 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 I do it every day. I've done it. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's um, look, here's here's the issue, Jason. I think and I want to I want to say two things that I think are really important to say. Number one is um, we know very little about what bacteria do what in your gut. How, which, we're starting to understand which ones are beneficial, which ones make good chemicals that your body use and regulate your cells and regulate your health. And, and remember, we have a symbiotic relationship with the bacteria in our gut. They're making chemicals and they're eating chemicals. The chemicals they make affect our cells. The chemicals they eat affect our body. So the way that we um, evolve our health is actually profoundly affected by our gut biome. So we're, we don't know enough yet to say definitively, this bacteria is good, this bacteria is bad. We're starting to have a good sense of that. The second, by the way, and, just, and so, the, yeah. just so you know, just to double down on this, like there's a form of therapy, it's experimental, but it's called fecal microbiome uh, transplantation, FMT. I heard about but, this. But, you know, we are finding now that you can take feces from healthy individuals that have good, you know, gut biome and good bacterial counts. And if you put it, you know, inject it into people that are suffering from uh, a bunch of different diseases, it actually is looking like it's curative. So Parkinson's, MS, IBS, colitis. So it just goes to show you that this that so it's, somebody it's with poor, good yeah. gut by bi there's, gut a, there's bacteria it's poorly it's understood it into but another person's really, really intestines. Where do you put yeah. the poop? No, you so in the, through the bum. No, no, no. You, yeah, you could do it there or you can take a pill. Uh, so there's a you little take pill, a pill and it's oh, got the, the fecal it. stuff in it and you swallow it and it, and it no, no, so I want to eat somebody this. else's poop. You can yeah. fix I, your poop. I said, I said it in a way so that we could see his reaction to in the bum and Jason was like this. And so that's <laughs> he got but excited. Wait, how does this impact your anus? That's what <laughs> well, the audience right, wants to is. know, Freeberg. <laughs> how does your anus impact your body? Here's the other point I wanted to make, which ties to what Shamath said. This is really important, JK. Yeah. So the gut biome is an ecosystem, like a rainforest. Mm -hmm. There yep. are trees that grow, monkeys climb the trees, they poop, there's jaguars, jaguars eat the monkeys, the trees grow because of the monkey poop. There's a whole ecosystem. All these organisms, all these microbes regulate one another and feed one another. And this is why probiotics do not work. Probiotics are single microbes, single bacterial strains or fungal strains that we put into a pill and we swallow it. And just because that microbe happens to have some beneficial effect, you know, on its own in a, in a Petri dish, it does not survive in your gut biome. Because it's like putting a house cat in a rainforest, the jaguar will eat the house cat, the house cat has nothing to eat, etc. It doesn't inoculate inoculate means that it survives thrives and the population grows. So when we take probiotics, it's just passing right through our gut, it doesn't stay there and doesn't That's change anything. And it turns out that the reason fecal microbiome um, uh, uh, fecal transplants work, it's because you're taking the whole microbiome from someone else's gut and you're putting mm. it in your gut. The and whole so rainforest. All, the whole rainforest. And so all the organisms that are needed that self that regulate one another, all of the small molecules that, that regulate that cross regulate each other, they all go in your gut and then they actually change your entire gut and your gut becomes the rainforest of someone else's gut. And so if someone else has a healthy gut, meaning my that anus, got, my anus can be your anus, Jason. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> there it is. so we put our anuses together and then a monkey goes between them yeah, and then the rainforest yeah. is, well, let me ask two yeah. questions. The FDA has not approved any of this yet. When will the FDA be approving these treatments, et cetera? There are a lot of, there are a lot of clinical trials going on for fecal transplant. UCSF has a huge clinical trial for MS, as Chamath pointed out, right now, where they are actually doing fecal transplants on patients without MS into people with MS and significant, you know, the early data of these sorts of treatments has indicated that there can be a very profound effect on the frequency of lesions appearing on the brain, uh, which is uh, one of the primary symptoms of, of uh, MS. And so these organisms, we don't yet know why, 
But some of these when bacteria... Will we, when will we understand this? Is it a five-year, oh, ten-year thing? There's a ton of startups. There's billions of dollars invested. So when it's, will it's all, we know? When will we know and all, have like a game yeah, plan? So it's already coming out. There's no. It's not like a binary switch. We're discovering new things. There's a, com- there's a set of companies that are discovering what are called small molecules. So they're finding what are the little chemicals that those good bacteria are making in your gut? And, what mm-hmm. are, and can we turn those chemicals into drugs? And so they're oh, trying sweet. to turn those into yeah. drugs. Other companies are saying, you know what, These, this is a set of good bacteria. Let's just put them in your body and figure out a way to get them to inoculate and stay. Other companies are saying, let's do fecal transplants. And other companies are basically just saying, let's change. This is what we do at Supergut. Let's just change the feedstock for your gut biome. And you can actually evolve the rainforest into a different state by changing what you're feeding the bacteria in your gut. And there's okay. certain molecules you can feed the gut bacteria, and then the populations will change into a more beneficial state. Why are people saying like eating, drinking kombucha and fermented um, vegetables, pickles, whatever, uh, apples are like great at fixing your biome, and then taking sugar out is good for your biome? This is another thing I keep hearing. Like well, eat more yeah. fermented people, foods. People are are si- are making single point claims like that because they have invested in a lifestyle and they want to defend their choices it's not to say it's not to say that those things are bad those are all good but i think what we know and the fecal transplantation is the most simple way of of pointing this out is that it's a broad scale holistic approach that gets the best results so as you know like if you if you had if you've had a kid that's had you know diarrhea for example right you know sometimes what we'll do now is instead of giving the kid some sort of diuretic suppressant, what you actually give them is um, a probiotic, right? And what you're trying to do is to reintroduce healthy bacteria into that child's stomach in a way that allows them to self manage and self heal, while the bad, you know, uh, diarrhea causing stuff kind of gets washed away, as an example. So will one thing be a cure all for you? No, I think that you should be very skeptical of those claims. That's why everybody says, a healthy, well balanced diet is really important, because we do not know, conclusively, this is why, you know, I, I tend to believe that the broad holistic diet works the best in moderation. Yeah, because you just don't know what you're not not getting. We don't know that, you know, we don't know, you can't say conclusively that there isn't a form of bacteria that is created specifically when you consume animal protein, that is extremely helpful to you. We don't know that that's not true. Not, now, we don't know that that is true either, right? Start, yeah, and, so, and, and there's a ton of research going on to try and figure that out right now. Have we figured out any of it, though? Like, yeah, could, yeah. This whole turmeric I mean, ginger movement. Yeah, we could, we could do 12 episodes on this. There is so much amazing discovery happening. This is a good paper to highlight that, which is like, hey, maybe avoid products uh, that have saccharin and sucralose in them. But my, um, my, my big thing is there is yeah. no diet whether it's keto, whether it's the South Beach diet, whether it's specific vegetarianism, whether it's veganism, nothing is a cure all for what ails you. There is nothing. And by the way, one important point in this paper, one of the points that these guys highlighted, which we see all the time in microbiome research, is that there are what are called responders and non responders, that within a population, it's not like everyone that eats sucralose has the same negative effect. Some people have a really negative effect. And some people have a mild to moderate to neutral effect. And so there's a range of your particular physiology, your particular gut biome that will respond differently to different inputs into your body. Um, And that's that's the most important thing to figure out because people Uh, need to spend time eating and sampling to understand what makes you feel better or worse. This is why I, I, I have an issue with you know, the broad based claims of this path will solve all your problems. It's just not true. You have to solve it for yourself. And it's, it's through iteration. And then the 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 yeah, anyways, it does seem like non processed foods, whole foods, things that exist in nature, that seems to me directionally correct as the way to go. And then the fake stuff, and the process stuff may be less good for you. You agree with that? Well, this is this is why I think like there there is a little bit of a scam being run on people who want to be healthy. Like, for example, have you guys looked at the ingredient list on Oatly? You know, everybody loves oat milk, but have you looked at the ingredient list? Are you really telling me conclusively that that is healthier than milk? It's insane. I mean, I could, I could argue both ways, but yeah, I mean, look at the the chemicals, look at the chemicals in a box of Oatly. I mean, just drink water. uh, Guys, I can also tell you the chemical name for every Mm -hmm. chemical that's in milk, which is all chemical, like all, everything around us is chemicals. So you know, I, look, I, mean, I understand I understand natural yeah. chemicals, but you <laughs> yeah, understand I mean, like, synthetically made man made chemicals that are explicit that have to be put on an ingredient list because of its danger in high quantities should be treated slightly differently, in my opinion. 
right. Yeah, well, look, I, I mean, Oli's just gave us three subpoenas. We're all fucked. We're being deposed by Oli now. 